Okay, welcome to Ham Radio K Zero P I R and my YouTube channel. If you've been following the article on my website, uh, this is installing DX Lab Launcher, and once you get it installed, you'll have an icon on your screen. Just double click on it; it brings up the launcher. And we just want to install a couple of programs to begin with. We're going to install Commander and the uh, DX Keeper. I'll put a link below to the article on getting Launcher installed. But to install Commander, all we have to do, you'll, you'll have the radio dials up here. They'll all be black because you won't have anything installed. To install it, all you have to do is click on the button. And it'll ask you if you want to install Commander, just click Yes, follow the prompts, and it should get installed. I get a little error message or a little warning from Windows. I gotta click OK and then the commander setup. Click OK. I want to create a desktop shortcut. I don't want to view the getting started. Click install. Ask me what program group. Click continue. And it installs. Then it does the upgrade. Click OK. OK. Now we have a red dial here, radio dial, and to start Commander, all we have to do is click on Start. Now I've already had it installed, so it's going to bring up my radio. But there's just a couple of tabs we need to visit to get connected to the radio. Click on the Config button down here, and go to the General tab, and select your radio from the drop-down list. I'm using the ICOM 7610. I didn't have to change anything in here. We just want to do the basics. Get over to the port. The ports tab, I'm using COM4. I'm using just the USB cable. And with the 7610, I have two virtual serial COM ports. I've got a video on that. I'll put a link below. But it's COM4 that I'm using. The baud rate is 115.2. Didn't have to change anything else trying to get away with just using the USB cable. Since the 7610 has the virtual serial COM ports, uh, that should work for me. And I haven't had any problems with it, so it's great to have that. Alright, and then you'll have device zero. I'll show you this later. But for right now, we just want to get connected. There isn't a save button down below, so just click the X. And when you do that, you should be connected. Anyway, you got your commander window, and you should be connected to your radio. And I'm um, using the 7610, so you may not have all of this in there. But it's a, a pretty neat little program. But uh, let me click on filters. Filters and devices, and it shows a few other things here. I don't really use the commander too much. You know, I, I get it started, connected to the radio, so when I'm logging... Uh, it logs the right uh, frequency and mode. That's really all I use it for. I don't uh, uh, use it to, to change frequency or modes. I use the front of the radio. But it is a neat little program and it's got this uh, this feature where you can set up manual devices like the Ameritron amp. And uh, if I go over to uh, around 3939, uh, it shows me where my AL811 should be set up, the load and the plate. And this is kind of like the sticky notes you put on the front of the amps. kind of takes the place of that, but you got to set it up. And uh, I set it up for just this band, so it shows up there. It's kind of neat. Um, the next thing we'll do is install DX Keeper, and I already have it installed but you'll install it just like we did the commander click on the DX Keeper and it will go through the installation process you, know, you want to be real careful with DX Keeper in your log I don't have to tell you that twice uh, I, I uh, switched over from Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook and I imported my QSOs from HRD Logbook into this and it is a little bit intimidating. I'm uh, not going to lie to you. It, uh, there's a lot of tabs in here. There's a lot of configuration. But I'll show you what I did. The first time you start DX Keeper, 
if I remember right, it asks you the call sign and location, that kind of stuff, to at least get you going. But uh, let's let's open up HRD Logbook and export the log from there so we can import it into DX Keeper. Okay, I've got HRD Logbook open, and I've enjoyed using this logbook a lot. It's uh, it's been very good. Let's go up to Logbook, File, and then Export, and we're just doing an ADIF, ADI. And you want to put in a file name. I've got one here, K0PIR log. Click Save. And I'm going to replace it because it's already there. I'm selecting all the entries and I click Export. And it takes a minute. It might even hang up. Yeah, it goes to not responding. But it eventually should finish. Okay, there we go. Exported all the entries we had. Click OK. Click Finish. Now I can close this out. And I have DX Keeper open. And I think probably one of the first things you want to do is go across to uh, My QTHs. And this is a little intimidating. There are a lot of buttons in here and there's a lot of configuration. But to simply get it going, go over to My QTHs and add one. Uh, just click the New. And when you click New, you can enter in the ID. Uh, I've got mine uh, set at home, and then my email address, name, LOTW I'm using is home, my rig, antenna, and all that. And you want to be real careful with the update QSOs and the log page display. So this one, that was new one that I was creating, I can just delete it. I only have the one. QTH, but you can manage your QTHs here. If I had a cabin out in the hills, I could add that QTH. The next place uh, I want to go is over to uh, import QSOs, and we're going to import that log file. I saved it to my desktop so it's easy to find. I don't think I changed anything in here. Uh, I believe uh, all of this is the default. I'd, I'd set up LOTW and EQSL. But just to get you going and get the log imported, click on Start. And I'll show you over here the ADIF style options. If you're importing from one of these other logs, uh, you would select it. Say N3FJP, I use that a lot. Uh, click that one um, or uh, uh, let's see is N1MM in there I don't see N1MM in there so that would just be a standard ADIF I guess so you'd select uh, the log and then click open and it will import all of your QSOs into your log file and I don't remember uh, where it named this file but I can tell you where to go to, to look at it. There's a config button here. And if you click on it and go over to the log tab, it shows you where your log is. And I think if I remember right, when I first started DX Keeper, it asked me to create a log. So that's what it did. And then there's the backup folder. And uh, I, I like having uh, backups because I never know when I'm going to mess something up. But anyway, you don't have to change anything else. If uh, your log uh, page display, I'll show you uh, that is this area. And you can configure it the way that you want it. And I had a little trouble doing it. Um, but I got the ones in there that I wanted. The default will probably work for you. But to configure it, you click on config, config and then you go in here and you can change these different uh, items. And then of course, of course put the caption in there. And really all I wanted to do was add uh, one for a little program that I got. The user defined the HRD and QRZ. When I upload to there, I want it to show uh, yes. 
and that's this column but the default may work for you that's a little bit more uh, detail that I'm going to get into right now and there are really good instructions on the website there's a lot of reading to do but uh, the default will probably work for you and if you get your log installed and you get uh, your commander going then you can start logging if I wanted to make a QSO right now I would just click on the capture button and put in the call sign say uh, it's going to be uh, Jerry tab over and I've already contacted him before on this band so it shows up in red and there are just so many neat features in here one I found uh, just this morning or yesterday is the auto recording audio recording I can click on this when I'm talking to him and then save it and when I save it it shows up in the details portion and that is selected up here I have details selected that shows up right here and I recorded uh, speaking with Bill this morning and if I want to play that back I just double click on it and it plays that audio file so boy that's really neat I like that I like recording people uh, I'm on a few nets and uh, some of these guys I've known for years I want to record uh, their audio and I can either send it to them or keep it but uh, I, I want to be able to do that and that's a really neat feature so there's a lot more to DX Keeper and of course Commander and I'm going to do some more videos uh, to uh, show you a little bit more of how uh, I've got mine set up but it's going to take me a little while. This is a big program, a lot of applications, but these two are good to get started on. All right, I'll put some links below. I'll do some more articles on my website. Um, I really enjoy uh, this program. It's working great with WSJTX and JT Alert. I uh, shouldn't have any problems with it in the future. Thanks for watching. Please visit my website www.k0pir.us and I've got a lot of articles on the ICOM 7300, the ICOM 7610, uh, some mobile operation and a few other uh, categories. So visit my website. Please remember to like, subscribe and share. Tell your friends and uh, 73 and good DX.